Perfect. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to my ghost community classroom. Uh, my name is Ali W from Yarn Inspirations, and we are here with Tamara of Moogly Blog. And we have a great project here today, um, the basic crochet Christmas stocking. So ready to start celebrating for the holidays, uh, ready to start stitching. Uh, this is the perfect stocking to make one for, for everyone in the household. Um, if you have any questions during today's class, please feel free to drop them in the chat and I will get as many as we can over to Tamara throughout class this evening. Perfect. All right, it. welcome everybody and happy holidays. It's that time of year. Um, not yet the American Thanksgiving, but as crafters, we know if we're gonna crochet or knit or make other crafts for the holidays, now is the time to get started. So today we've got this Red Heart Crochet Christmas stocking. Let me hold the pattern up here for you one more time. Um, if you are following along live, there's a link in the chat. Otherwise, you can simply Google Red Heart Crochet Christmas stocking to find that written pattern. And this is a really great Christmas stocking because it's just got that really classic look. It's ready for your own personalized embellishments. You could certainly add letters, um, alphabet, you know, appliques. Uh, you could add buttons, all sorts of really personal touches. This is just a really great basic stocking jumping off point for you using really mostly just basic stitches, single crochet, double crochet, chaining, of course. Um, we're going to be doing some short rows, so that's what I really want to focus on in on today. This is a basic pattern, so we're using basic stitches, but this isn't to learn how to crochet class. So if you need to learn how to crochet, you'll want to follow one of those classes before you follow along with this one. So let's go ahead and switch over to the hand cam and take a look at what we're using here today. In addition to our yarn, which I'll show you here in a minute, we're going to need two hooks to make this pattern, two different sizes of hooks. We use, let me make sure I get these exactly right here. We use a four millimeter, which is a USG or a six hook and a five millimeter, which is USH eight hook. So a four millimeter and a five millimeter. We'll also need our standard crochet supplies. Some stitch markers are really handy, scissors. And for this pattern, you'll also want to have a um, tape measure handy because we're going to be working to measurements rather than to rows. The only other supply that I believe you'll need is, and it's got some in here somewhere, we've got our yarn needles. There we go. We always have to have a couple yarn needles to weave in our ends. I'm gonna set that aside and bring the camera over here. And we are going to be using Red Heart Super Saver, which of course we've got our standard sort of red, green, and white here, but you can absolutely customize your stocking to match your decor. Use you know the traditional colors we've got here, or mix it up and use your own, of course. We'll use less than one skein of each of these colors to make our stocking. So because we only have an hour today and I want to really hone in on the parts of this pattern, they're a little bit trickier and a little bit different. I've gone ahead and made our first little section right here. To make this pattern, let me pull up my written pattern here too so I can get all the details just right. To make this pattern, we start by chaining 43 skipping the chain closest to the hook, which would be our turning chain, and single crocheting back into each chain across. So that's a total of 42 stitches across, right there. So row one is just a row of 42 single crochets. Row two is a row of 42 double crochets, so just a double crochet in each stitch. Then a row of single crochets, then double crochets, single crochets, and double crochets. And that is how we start the top right here of our stocking. So we want to keep working a row of double crochets followed by a row of single crochets until this section right here is 10 inches long. This is where we're going to be using that tape measure. When we make this section, we want to finish on a double crochet row. I made the mistake of accidentally finishing on a single crochet row and I had to add one more row here on my little sample. So if you find that as you're making these rows, you've got, you un, when you end on a double crochet row, it's maybe just under 10 or just over 10. That's fine. It's just an estimate. Get as close to 10 inches or so as you can. Or if you want a really long stocking or a really short stocking, you can change the number of rows for yourself. So one thing when I was making these rows, as you can see here, we're working back and forth in rows. You'll note on the pattern, the first row is labeled as the right side. So I put a stitch marker here. This is the side where I was working those single crochet rows from this side. When we finish working that double crochet row, we'll finish with the wrong side row. 
So then we want to turn that back over to the right side before we move on to the heel. So once again, when we start our stocking, it's just a row of 42 single crochets, then a double crochet in each stitch, single crochet in each stitch, double crochet, continuing on until you've made about 10 inches or so, ending on a double crochet row. So that's the simple part, right? We're just working back and forth even, single crochets and double crochets. Then we're ready to begin the heel. And this is where this pattern really gets interesting. So that's the part that I kind of want to jump to next. But before I do that, I just want to make sure, are there any questions on that first start part of the stocking before we move on to the heel? I think we're all set. Okay, fantastic. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, but I wanted to mention, I did say we're using two different, two different hook sizes for this one. All of it is made with the larger hook size until we get to the finishing. So just grab the larger hook size, which would be the five millimeter. We won't use the four millimeter until we get to some of the finishing work. So this is all made using our largest hook size. So you can see here, I have not made 10 inches. This is a small sample here for our class, but we're gonna go ahead and pretend that I've made 10 inches here, finishing on a double crochet row. And then you'll see I've got another stitch marker right here. The first thing we need to do when we go to move to the heel is we want to mark the 33rd stitch. Remember, we had a total of 42 stitches. So we skip the first 32 and put a stitch marker in the 33rd. You wanna make it easy, you can count back 10 from the end. We wanna go ahead and mark that stitch because that is where we're going to join to for our heel. We're going to join to that stitch, but we wanna make sure we're doing it from the right side. So again, after you've made that last double crochet row, we turn it over so that we're working from the right side. Got my stitch marker in the 33rd stitch of that row. So now we're ready to begin adding our heel. For the heel, we're going to come in with our color B. So you can see for red, I use red for our color A. You can use whatever color you like. I'm going to bring in some hunter green here is what I have. I think this is a really pretty Christmassy green. Of course, I managed to tangle it on myself here as I pulled it off of the skein. Let me just get that taken care of. There we go. So we've got it laid out, right side facing up, stitch marker in the 33rd stitch. We've skipped 32 of them and we've marked that stitch. So this is where we go to add the heel. We've got our larger hook. We skip all those stitches and we're going to join to that marked stitch. So we can do that with the stitch marker in there or if it's in the way, you can go ahead and peel it, pull it out. We're going to go under both loops I like to just make a slip knot or a slip stitch rather, not a slip knot, but a slip stitch and pull that down nice and tight so it's nice and joined. Then we can go ahead and get rid of that stitch marker and put it out of our way. Then to continue with our heel, we are going to start with a chain one. Make sure that slip stitch is pulled down tight. And then we are going to single crochet in that same stitch we joined to and the next nine stitches, which would take us all the way to the end here. So we go into that first one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We have a total of 10 stitches here. Let's make sure, double check that we've skipped the right number here. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. That's what I was afraid of. I came up with one extra stitch, so I had marked the wrong stitch here while I was preparing for class. It's a great, great point there. I made a mistake, but it's always, always important to count your stitches. I thought I'd mark the right one. I was one off. I needed to be one to the left there. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that back out and rejoin there. Let me double check and make sure I'm just going to have 10 here at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, now we're in the right spot. So we've joined with our slip stitch. And once again, we're just going to chain one and single crochet in those last 10 stitches of the row. Three, four, 
This pattern is very basic and uses very basic stitches, but it does have some unusual moves. So it's important to take the time to, as I just did, count your stitches and make sure that you aren't landing in the wrong spot because you may not notice until a little bit later in the pattern. So we finish up going into the top of the chain three there. The chain three is the beginning of double crochet rows do count as a stitch. So now we should have 10 stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yes, 10 stitches. Now this is where it gets a little unusual again. We want to fold our stocking so that the ends come together. So we're basically like we're folding in half here from the right side, stitch marker out. We're just going to bring that other side up so that as we finish working to this row, at this end, we can start working right into that same row at the other end. So that's the wrong side on the inside. We want the right side out, okay? So then we are going to single crochet in the first 11 stitches. Get that centered again there. So you can see I worked up to the end one. We want to bring it around without twisting. You can see there's no twist in there. And then we can just put our hook right in that first stitch. Let's pull that end out of the way, leave in our ends later, and single crochet right in there. Now this is going to leave this gap open right here. This is seaming that we'll do towards the end of our stocking. Right now we're just going to continue working across this row. So there's the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whoop, well, a little bit more yarn there, got a little too much tension on the hook, 10, and 11. So to double check our work, we want to make sure that for our little heel row here, you can see you worked across the end and then the beginning of that last row of the leg, we wanna have 21 stitches total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So that right there is that first row of the heel. Then we move on to the shape heel instructions. So were there any questions before we move on to the shape heel instructions? You can see, Kind of an unusual move there. Working right over what's going to be that seam later on. No questions right now. Okay, so next is shaping the heel. And this is where we're going to be working in something called short rows, which is if you are newer to crochet, you may not have done yet uh, or done before. Even if you've been crocheting for quite a while, you might not have made short rows yet. They pop up quite a bit more often, I think, in knitting, but they are really great in crochet as well. And we can do some really fun things. One of the main things we end up doing when we're working short rows in crochet is what's called turning a heel or shaping a heel. You can see we're going to be creating this curve of that heel right there. That's what we're working on in the shape heel section. So this is the part that tends to trick people up but it's not so bad. What you wanna do is just really keep count. If you want to, it can be really helpful to grab some stitch markers to sort of map, mark the beginning and ends of each row. So it help you just really stay exactly where you want to be. So to begin shaping our heel, we wanna turn. So now we're gonna be working this next row from the inside of the stocking. And that's okay, all our little ends can just hang out in there for later. And we're going to do the first row. We chain one, and we single crochet in just the four, first 14 stitches. So there's one, two, three, four. And remember, there were 21 total, so we're not going to be working all of them, just the first 14. So I know that there were 11 on this side. It gives me a good estimate here. We'll make a couple more on this side now that I know I've passed sort of where that seam will be. And then we'll double check and make sure I've done the right number here. Pull up a little bit more of that green yarn. Alrighty, 
We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. I'm going to go ahead and put one of my stitch markers in that first stitch of this row. I don't know for sure it'll come in handy later, but it might. So I'm going to go ahead and drop one right there. So that was our first row for the shape heel. The second row, we need to turn, chain one, and now we're working from the outside of the stocking again. But now we're only going to single crochet in the first seven stitches. So that would be the one we just made. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm gonna leave, just like before, we're gonna leave the rest of those unworked. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a stitch marker in the first stitch I made in this row. Okay. So after our first two rows of heel shaping, it's starting to look a little funky. It's going to be a little strange until we start working off and really creating the shaping. Right now we're sort of building up the center of that heel. So the next row, which would be the third line under shape heel, is chain one. First turn, turn and chain one. And then single crochet in the first seven stitches again. So we know we just made seven. We're going to work into each one of those we just made in the previous row. So there's one, two, three, four. Got the center pull going from my super saver, but the green one wants to fight me a little bit. So I'm going to pull up a little bit more there. There we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, oops, six, and seven. We can go right into that last marked stitch so we know we're exactly in the right spot there. Since I've worked into that stitch, I'm actually going to go ahead and move that stitch marker up to the first stitch of this row that I just made. Okay, so we're on that third row, chain one, single crochet in the first seven stitches, but we're not done. We're now going to single crochet in the next stitch of the long row below. So what does that mean? Well, that row of 21 was our big long row. So we've made our seven stitches across here, we're now going to jump all the way down to that first unused stitch right there of our long row. So we just put our, put our hook right in there and make a single crochet, just as it, we normally would. That finishes that third line of the shape heel. So the next row, which is the final next row under shape heel, if you're following along with the written instructions, is going to be the set of instructions that we're going to keep doing until all 21 stitches have been worked off. So what does that look like? We know we need to turn and chain one. So we're working single crochets. So we single crochet in the first eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We know that puts us right back in that marked stitch. So we can go ahead and take that stitch marker out of there. Then we single crochet in the next stitch of the long row below. So you can see we're working to that one. That's the next one right there. We just put our hook all the way down to that first stitch we miss like that. And like that, we have done that first one. So now our instructions say, continue in this manner until all 21 heel stitches are worked. So what does continue in this manner mean? Well, we're going to chain one and single crochet all the way across until we get to that marked stitch, or basically the first stitch of the previous row. So the numbers are going to change, but we're going to eventually create the shaped heel here. So rather than write out each row with just going up by each, you know, by a number each row, 
they tell us to continue to work in this manner. So we chain one, single crochet across till we get to that last marked stitch. We can move that stitch marker on up to the first stitch of this row. And then what do we need to do? Bend that next unused stitch all the way down here and just jump all the way down and single crochet in that stitch. Then we turn and do it again. And we just keep going back and forth in this exact way. Chain one, single crochet in each stitch across till we get that marked stitch. And it takes a little while, but it doesn't take as long as you might think, because of course, while there are 21 stitches to sort of be gathered in this way, we're doing you know, one at the end of each row, and then we come back and do it again. And they just work their way off here. We've got our last marked stitch. So we can go ahead and move that stitch marker up, or if you're feeling good about where you're at, you can go ahead and set that one aside. And that next unused stitch of the long row below and jump all the way down there. So you can see when we're working to this side, there are two rows because we had those 14 to sort of get us into the middle, but it's still the long row below. Then we do the same thing. We chain one and turn, single crochet in each stitch across. So we get to that first stitch we made in the previous row. Flip some more of that green yarn here. The green yarn seems to be showing up really dark on my screen and I'm sorry about that. I've got lots of light on here. Sometimes the yarn just wants to show up a little darkly. You can see it is green. There we go. And of course you can have so much fun with the colors on these. Definitely mix it up. Go traditional, non-traditional. Um, when you're making the leg and then the foot of the stocking, you could absolutely you know, switch colors every two rows, do some really lovely striping. Just have a lot of fun with it. So, all right, we've single crocheted all the way across. You can see we're going to jump off that cliff again, find that first stitch, and single crochet right in there. So, when we work part of the way across a row before we turn and work, walk, work back the other way, that is called working in short rows. And you can see how it's already starting to sort of create that shape there. But this is the part where most people run into trouble with crochet socks and therefore crochet stockings. Because what is a crochet stocking but a really great big sock, right? But I love making stockings. And if crochet socks are something you've been wanting to try, then I would absolutely recommend making a simple stocking like this one first. It's going to give you some great practice with short rows and turning heels. And for whatever reason, I think the stockings are just a little bit simpler because you don't have to make them fit, right? We don't have to actually worry about this fitting onto anybody's foot. So we can just have some fun doing the crocheting and making the stitches without worrying about fit or sizing at all. So we've worked our way back across. We've got that cliff again. We need to jump off, find that next stitch and gather that one up there. So we're just going to continue working back and forth across here. So earlier when we began the class, as I continue breaking these single crochets here, I did mention, um, you know, you could absolutely add names to this sort of stocking. If you look at the written pattern, you see at the top, we've got a nice wide white cuff, which is really great. If you wanted to add surface crochet to that or applique letters, I have a Moogly Crochet Alphabet on my site, um, which of course is free to use. Um, and you could absolutely just really embellish it. There are so many fun buttons I've noticed in the stores these days, really explore Michaels and all the different really fun notions they've got for the holidays. You can absolutely dress up this stocking in some really fun ways. We worked all the way back across. We've come to that cliff. We find that next guy there and jump all the way down there. There we go. As soon as we make that stitch in the long row, we know it's time to chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you like to do it and add some more stitches. So those are some ideas I have. I know when I've made um, stockings for our family's use, I've done lots of really unique striping patterns. I like to make them stash busters. So when we have visitors for the holidays, they get their own stocking, but it's really unique. Um, and then for the kids, I have definitely added different buttons and decorations over the years. So you can really customize them and make them your own. So 
while we're in the live class today, if you guys have any great ideas for ways you'd like to customize your stocking, definitely drop those in the chat so we can read them off for everybody. Because it's just such a great pattern for you to really, as I keep saying, make it your own here. So we're working our way across. We've got just a few more rows to go here. Come to that end of that previous row. So we need to jump down to that long row again. And it might feel strange at first because you feel like, gosh, I'm skipping over those two rows, right? It's going to have this great big gap. But you can see as we continue making these short rows here, it really doesn't leave a great big gap here. As long as you're not, you know, as long as all the gifts that you're putting in the stocking come in sizes bigger than a marble, you should be all set. So I just want to continue working my way across the heel here so we can get to the foot. Once again, we're using the larger hook size for this one and Red Heart Super Saver. But if you wanted to mix up your yarns, you can use whatever hook with the, your chosen yarn that gives you a really nice solid fabric like this. It's crochet, so there's always gonna be little holes in the fabric there, but whatever gives you a really nice sort of firmish type fabric, probably what's recommended on the label or maybe one size down. All righty. Worked across that row. Come on down, just a couple more rows to go here. This part does take some time, but you can see just how great it well it works for turning that heel. And it creates just a really nice, smooth transition there with our short rows. Now there are other great patterns and things you can do with short rows besides turning a heel. I know that Yarn Inspirations has a really great scarf pattern that utilizes short rows that I believe I believe I taught a Michael's class before. It might've been a Michael's class. It might've been a lunch and learn on their Facebook page, but it just creates some really great motion in the fabric. Um, it's also really fun to try working short rows with variegated or self-striping yarns because you'll get some really interesting effects that way as well. So no escaping it. We've just got to work all these heel stitches here but we are getting close to the end. Just a few stitches left on this end. Grab that guy and continue on across. So I switched colors here to do the heel, but if you wanted to do the heel in the same color, you could. You could also do the heel in you know, any other color. You could do it in a different textured yarn. That would have some really fun effects as well but you can definitely have some fun playing with this pattern. So we are working our way just as fast as we can here through the heel. It's mostly single, or it's all single crochet stitches here in the heel, as you can see. When we switch back to the foot, we will be going back to some of the um, double crochet, single crochet alternating rows. But for the heel itself, we want to stick with just single crochet stitches. It creates a really nice firm heel. I am almost done with the heel rows here. You can see we started off with short rows, but each one of these rows is going to get just one stitch longer as we add the stitch on the side there. So I saw a few people chiming in with where they're tuning in from. If you guys are watching from around the world. Let us know where you're watching from today. Speaking of the Christmas spirit, I live in Iowa and we just got our first big snowstorm yesterday and into a little bit of today. So we actually had some snow sticking on the ground. Definitely makes this class feel a little bit more appropriate. All right, so this is where having those stitch markers can be really handy. We're getting close to the end. We just wanna make sure that we get all those stitches and don't accidentally end up working into the side or something. So I know I'm going to have one more when I come back this way. So we're getting close. Let's see, a little bit more of this green yarn. Let's see, now this pattern does make a finished stocking that is about 16 inches long when using the recommended yarn. But as I mentioned before, you could absolutely add more rows to make a longer stocking if that's something you need um, for your gift giving. <laughs> um, or you can, of course, eliminate some rows if you want a little bit shorter. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can definitely have some fun. Ah, Wisconsin, I see it's getting snow today too. 
must be going along, going around in the Midwest here. We didn't quite have snow on Halloween this year, but I remember plenty of snowy Halloweens from when I was a kid. All right, getting close. We knew, remember there were just two stitches left on that other end. There's just two stitches left on this end. So we know we're working nice and evenly here. So that means there should be just two more rows here, I believe, of these. And right now I'm really just kind of ignoring that leg, whether I'm working from the inside or the outside, doesn't really matter. I've got that outside stitch marker. So I'll know when I go back to the foot, I can double check and make sure that nothing's gotten twisted. Let's see, put one more yarn here. Ah, and, and let's see, someone, another Tamara says it's snowy in Farmington, Minnesota. Oh my gosh, I love Minnesota. I've been up there just a couple of times, but it's absolutely beautiful. And I can only imagine how beautiful it is right now. Seems like just last week we were looking at all the beautiful leaves, of course, and the seasons do change so quickly. All righty. Here we go. We've got that last marked one on this side. So we wanna make sure to go in there. So this side, we're done working off those heel stitches. We can go ahead and take that stitch marker right on out of the way. Come back the other way. I see we've got some people in Arlington, Virginia and sunny LA. No snow in sunny LA, but that sunshine will be mighty nice come January. I'm always excited when I get to travel to warmer climates in the Midwestern winter. <laughs> I'm from Augusta, New Jersey. Thanks for joining us tonight. Probably lots of chilly weather. We've got first snow in Pennsylvania today too. looks like we put the perfect day to start a Christmassy project. And as you know, as I've said, obviously, we can't make the whole stocking in an hour here, which is why I kind of jumped right into this heel thing. You can see, even over the course of our time here together, I am almost done with the heel. So you could definitely make one of these within, I would say, an evening or two, certainly within a week, depending on how much time you want to devote to your crocheting. So we've got our last one on this side. I'm just going to work in there. And with that, we have worked into all of those 21 stitches. So once all those 21 heel stitches are worked, it says to fasten off. So that means you're going to cut our yarn. Put my scissors here. I always like to leave a good four to six inches so I can weave those ends in later. And then I'll just go ahead and secure that end like so. Now I wanna stop and take a look. What do I have going on here, right? Well, I've got, where's that stitch marker that marks the outside? There it is. Okay, so I know this is the outside of my stocking. And now look at that heel. Look at that, we have turned a heel. So if you follow along with that and you haven't done it before, you will have turned your very first heel. So if you're looking at making socks, that is really the trickiest part right there, sort of the key to figuring it all out. So with that fastened off, we're ready to switch back to color A so we can get working on the foot portion. So before I begin the foot, are there any questions on turning that heel? The right side is the outside of the stocking. Yes, I just saw that one pop up, great question. The right side would be the outside of the stocking. I don't see any other questions here right now. All righty. Well, then I'm just gonna pull up some more of my red yarn here and then we continue, as I say, with our foot instructions. So for the foot, I'm gonna move my instructions here to the other side. It's a little easier for me to read as well. With the, for the other foot, we are going to join with the right side facing. So we wanna make sure we've marked the outside there that we're on the outside of our stocking. And we are going to be doing it with our red yarn. So I've got that ready to go in our bigger hook. Make sure we've got all our details there. What we're going to do is we are going to skip the first 10 stitches of the heel and join to the next stitch. So we need to come back here and look at our heel for a minute. We'll make sure we're on the right side. So we're on the outside of our stocking. 
So we can come back here and look. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've skipped those first ten and joined the one after that. Always a good idea to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's our 11th stitch. I'm going to go ahead and just put my hook right in there. Find the end of my red yarn, which wants to wander away. There we go. And then what I like to do is I'm just going to drape that yarn end right over there and pull that loop through. And then just, again, make a little slip stitch there to secure it nice and tight. Pull down on that end. Then we're going to chain one. And if your join tends to be a little tall, you can count that as your chain one too. And then we are going to single crochet in the same stitch and the next 10 stitches of the heel. So here's our first one. Don't need to use a stitch marker for this one with the separate color. It's gonna be really obvious which one that one is. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. All right, let's make sure we've skipped. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then we should have 11 stitches worked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. Then let me double check our instructions here. We skip the next two stitches of the stocking and single crochet in the next 17 stitches of the stocking. So that means we need to come back down here and look at this, the leg portion, our previous red stitches. See, we worked into this one. We're going to skip the next two and go to the one after that. So there's our, where we, our heel is joined. Skip one, skip two jump all the way down to single crochet in the stitch after that. All right, then let's see. Do, do, let me check my instructions. Excuse me. Uh, single crochet in the next 17. So there's, let's see. Okay, so that's one. I had to see if we had nearly needed 17 or 18. So two, we just need 17 total, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Should be getting us real close to the other side there. 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. You can see that leaves two stitches there. Oops, two stitches there unworked. So that kind of matches what we did on the other side. So that's a good sign. So we skip those two stitches and single crochet in the remaining 10 stitches of our heel. So we want to sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, straighten that out and find that first single crochet right there. I'm just going to skip over those two stitches and jump right back into our heel. Just pull those ends out of the way. There we go. So there's one. Two, we should have 10 stitches left here, the 10 that we skipped, and those are the 10 that we're crocheting into now. So four, five, six, seven, eight, moment of truth, nine and 10. We did it right. We ended in the stitch right before the one we joined to there. So you see now we've just single crocheted all the way around that heel. Skip those two stitches, but it lays it nice and flat right there. If that little gap is something that is going to bother you in your finished stocking, you've got an end right there. So you can just take a couple little stitches and close up that gap if that, like I say, if that is something that bothers you. So after we've gone all the way around, we are going actually to not join with a slip stitch. That was certainly my first inclination. First thing I wanted to do, but for this pattern, we do not join with a slip stitch here we are going back to working in rows. We go back to the stitch pattern that we used for the leg. So we talked a little bit about it, but we didn't do it before. We work a row of single crochet, then we work a row of double crochet. So we start with a chain three, counts as our first double crochet. 
and then just double crochet in each remaining stitch across. So we go right back to that same stitch pattern that we did for the leg, a row of single crochet followed by a row of double crochet, then a row of single crochet, then a row of double crochet. For this one, there is actually a row count. So it says you repeat pattern rows two and three five more times. So the double crochets would be pattern row, let me just double check, yes, pattern row two, and the single crochets would be pattern row three. So two, then three, two, then three, two, then three, then row two, five more times. So you'd have your single crochet, then 10 rows of double crochet and single crochet, then another row of double crochet. So that would be a total of 12 rows in the foot. I had to kind of do the math there on the fly. But we're just working back and forth in rows. And we want to again end on a row two repeat. So that would be your round or your row rather of double crochets like we're doing right here. So we do have several more repeats. And again, you can change the length of your foot. If you want a little bit longer foot, add a couple more rows. If you want a shorter foot, take a couple of rows off. But for now, we're working a double crochet row for our foot. And that would be from the inside of our stocking. And we just continue working back and forth in rows until we have the total number of rows for that section. For our little demo here today, I'm just going to finish this double crochet row and pretend that it's our whole entire foot because I do want to be able to at least touch as much as I can on the toe and the cuff. So we are just going to continue to double crochet across here. For now, we're back up to should be approximately 42 rows or 42 stitches, excuse me, I believe. Oops. So after we have made all of our foot rows, then what we're going to move on next is the toe. And for the toe, we switch back to color B. So whatever color you made the heel out of, or if you want to mix it up, and use a different color, you absolutely can do that as well. So I'll just turn that back right side out here. Sometimes when I'm working from the inside of a project, the project starts to want to climb up inside a little bit and flip itself wrong side out. If that happens, it's not a big deal. You can just flip it right side out again when it's time to sort of join or when you need to make sure you're looking from the right side. It's one of the reasons I love using a stitch marker to indicate which one is the right side. So I always have that stitch marker hanging out there to clue me in when I start to get a little bit lost. So as I say for our foot, we continue working that pattern, single crochet row, double crochet row, till we end on a double crochet row. Then we break our yarn again. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that yarn. And now we are done with our red yarn. So we'll set that one aside and bring back, being, how do you say that again? Bring back the green one for the toe. Uh, before I do that real quick, are there any questions I could answer? I don't see any other questions, but feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat. Um, we should have plenty of time to get to those if you do have any. Great, okay. So we're going to join our toe pretending that we've made all of our foot rows right here. Remember, we've been working in rows, so we definitely have a first stitch. Again, we're on from the outside, which would be the right side of our stocking. So it's gonna be the same stitch that we finished off in, and that's the one we're going to be joining to. So we're going to go ahead and join to that one. And chain one and single crochet right back in that same stitch. But it's not going to be just a regular single crochet. What we want to do is a single crochet two together. So let me slow down on that just a little bit here. I've joined with my slip stitch, chain one, and then the first thing we do is single crochet two together. So to do that, we're going to go into that first stitch again, just as if we were going to single crochet and pull up our loop. Then we go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up our loop. So now we have three loops left on our hook. We yarn over and pull through all three. That's called a single crochet two together or a single crochet decrease. Then we single crochet in the next 15 stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Then we single crochet two together again. So we start with a single crochet two together, single crochet 15, then single crochet two together again. Let's go into the next stitch and pull up a loop, then go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three. Now we just continue repeating this row decrease can, with a decrease at the beginning and end of every row until just three stitches remain. So let's do one more of those together. I'm gonna chain one and turn or turn and chain one, single crochet two together in those first two stitches. So you've done the first one and pull up a loop, then the second one and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. Then just single crochet across until two stitches remain. So now we're not working back into the stocking. We're just going to be working into that previous toe row. So single crochet across until two stitches remain. Should be getting pretty close here. So you can see as we're decreasing, we're doing that decrease at the beginning and end of every row. Every row of the toe will shrink by two stitches. So eventually you should be left with just three stitches left in your final row of the toe. But you'll notice it's kind of a funky looking toe, right? Oops, we got to those last two stitches. We're going to be making two rows that we're then going to sew, or excuse me, two toes that will then get sewn together. So I've come to those last two stitches, I actually went a little far, I had to pull a stitch out. Just remember to decrease again when we get to those last two stitches. So for the sake of time and getting to some of the other things here, Basically, we just keep decreasing, decrease the beginning and end of every row until just three stitches are left in the final row of the toe. Then we break our yarn and then we turn and we do the same thing on the other half of our foot here. This creates two oval shaped toes right here that then will seam together when we do all our other seaming. We're going to need to seam the bottom of the foot and the back of the leg. So after you have finished your two halves of the toe, we'll seam those together You'll want to use the same color yarn, seam the bottom of your foot together, should have several more yards there, or <laughs> rows rather, not yards, but several more rows there. And then you need to sew up the back of the leg. Then we're ready to add the cuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my green yarn here. I saw a question come up about treble crochets. In this pattern, we're just using single crochets and double crochets. Um, however, if you are tuning in from the UK um, and you're using UK crochet terms, um, then that may be some of the confusion. In the UK, a single crochet is called a double, and in the US, what's called a double crochet, in the UK is called a treble crochet. But in terms of US terms, we're just doing singles and doubles for this pattern, at least so far. So, as I say, go ahead and cut your ends, then we're going to need to do just a little bit of seaming back here and in the other open parts. But to finish it off with the cuff, I'm just going to take a couple of stitches right back here. Your seaming, as you can see here, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. It can just be a whip stitch. I'm gonna just take the yarn needle and sort of go through both layers here. Just cinch those two sides together. If you want to use stitch markers to sort of join these rows together along the side and hold them even, that's a great idea, especially if you've got a lot more rows than we've got here on our little sample. But you would just continue doing that until you've worked all the way back down to the heel. And then of course, weave in your ends. Then the final thing we need to do is add our cuff, which is on page two of the pattern there. So for the cuff, that's where we're coming in with our white yarn. And again, for the sake of time, I've already made a little mini cuff right here. Our mini cuff is, or our full size cuff rather, is a chain of 47 and then skip that first one. So we've got a total of 46 single crochets and we just work 11 rows of 46 single crochets. You can see here, I've just worked three of them. I did go ahead and sort of mark my right side, but on this one, it's just single crochet. So whichever one you like better is absolutely fine. Then what we're going to do is before we add it to our stocking, because see we worked in rows again, we do need to sew that cuff seam. 
So we wanna bring those ends together, making sure not to twist. So just grab that stitch marker, or excuse me, that yarn needle again. Get my end on there. Let's see. Just gonna fold those ends, bring them up here together and stitch through both layers. And of course you can weave in your ends however you like, now or later. Probably as you go would be a little bit easier. But again, I'm just whip stitching, sending my needle through both of these layers. And of course with 11 rows, it's gonna be a few more stitches here, but on our little sample, we're already there. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that done. Now we've got our cuff all ready to go. This is where we're going to switch over to that smaller hook size. So this is our four millimeter crochet hook. We're going to need to bring up the end of that white yarn or whatever color you wanted to make your cuff out of. And now what we want to do is grab that cuff, find that seam, get as close to it here as we can. We're just going to join sort of in that first stitch right next to the seam we sewed there. I'm just going to rejoin my yarn here. So again, we can join that with a slip stitch or excuse me with this. Yes, a slip stitch. There we go. I actually said it right this time. A slip stitch like so. And then we chain one and single crochet in the first two stitches. There's one and two. Then we skip the next single crochet right there. And we work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all in the next one. So once again, we single crochet in the first one, or excuse me, in the first two, then we skip the next one. And then in the stitch after that, we work that repeat. We double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet right there, all in that same stitch. Just make sure we can get that show up there. There we go. Then we skip the next stitch and single crochet in the stitch after that. Then we go back to the beginning of our repeat. Skip the next single crochet. And then in the stitch after that, we do the double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Then we skip the next stitch and single crochet in the stitch after that. And that is our repeat that creates sort of that lacy shell and we continue that all the way around here. This creates the bottom of the cuff that will go on to our stocking this way. So, and you've got the idea of how that repeat works. We work all the way around and then just join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet you made and we break our yarn. Again, I'm not going all the way around here just so we can get us through as much of the pattern as we can in the hour that we've got for class. Then we're going to attach our cuff. We're going to stick with a smaller hook and with our white yarn. This is where we're going to, if that show up a little bit better here, we're going to slide our cuff over the top of our stocking. But before we do that, let's go ahead and join our yarn. A little bit easier before we're holding it all together here. So we want to rejoin our yarn now on the other side. We put our fancy edging on one side of that cuff. Now we need to work into the other side of the cuff. So I'm going to go ahead and join to the stitch right next to our seam and just join with a slip stitch here. There we go. My ends are sort of getting in the way. So when you are working on this and you've got all the time, you definitely want to go ahead and take your time to weave in your ends as you go. It'll make it a little bit easier for you here. So we have chained one. We're going to single crochet in that first stitch, like so. Here we are. And now let's go ahead and place the cuff over the stocking. So we want to make sure again that our stocking is right side out. There's that stitch marker. Our cuff is right side out. And we want to make sure that that scalloped edging we already did is now facing down towards the heel. And we just slide that cuff right over the top of our stocking. Now, if you'll recall, we had 42 stitches in a round for the stocking. 
46 for the cuff. It needs to be a little bit bigger so that it can fit around. It also means there's gonna be times when we work into the cuff, but not the stocking as we go around. Because right now we're going to be joining these together. So let's get this sort of lined up here and get all my ends out of the way so we've got a clearer view. There we are. So you can see I've got that back seam right about there. I've got my cuff right here. I have single crocheted in that first stitch of the cuff. And now we're going to work 21 single crochets through both layers at the same time. So we find that first stitch there. We're going to go into the next stitch of the cuff. Get that good and focused here. Next stitch of the cuff and then find a stitch near the seam. It doesn't have to be the exact, you know, one right next to the seam. Just find whatever one you can get to easily and go through that one as well. Then we yarn over and pull that yarn through both layers and finish our single crochet just as we normally do. So that's the first one. Then we want to find the next cuff stitch and the next stocking stitch. Go through both of those layers and make our single crochet. So this is how we join those two layers together. The next stitch of the cuff, then the next stitch of the stocking. We don't have to sew them together. We've done enough seaming on the rest of the stocking. Now we get to crochet these together. So as we go around, as I said, you can follow the numbers in the written pattern. Every once in a while, you'll need to work through the cuff and then go back to working through both layers just because the cuff has those couple extra stitches, just like that first one we made. But otherwise, you just want to take your time, really make sure you find that next stitch of both layers and work through both of those layers. Now, after you've gotten all the way around for this one, it says to go ahead and fasten off. But you know what? I think that would be silly because we've got one more row to do in this exact same color. So if you wanted to fasten off after you've gotten all the way around, you could, or you can just keep going. Basically, the only thing we have left to do is work a top edging that is identical to our bottom edging. So after you've worked through both of those layers all the way around, I would say you can go ahead and join with a slip stitch. Let's go ahead and work this one in the round. Join the slip stitch to that first one and then go right into that same pattern for the bottom edging here. We've got a single crochet, then we skip a stitch and then work double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the next then skip the next one and single crochet in the stitch after that. So that is what we do around the top then. If we go back to our photo here, you can see how that just mimics what we did at the bottom. The only other thing we do is before we finish off, after we've made that scalloped edge all the way around there, when we come back to the end before we join with that final slip stitch, we want to create a chain for our hanging loop. You can see that featured on the photo right there. In the pattern, they recommend making a chain of 12. That seems to be a pretty standard hanging loop size. I know I tend to end up landing on 12 for whatever reason quite often myself, but if you need a longer hanging chain or a shorter hanging chain, absolutely you can adjust that length to fit your own project. But otherwise, we've done all of the stitches here today. You can see it's all single crochets and double crochets. The main thing is just take your time with that heel, use your stitch markers when you need to, and really count your stitches. Um, other than that, it's really just basic stitches and you'll make your own crochet Christmas stocking. So was there any questions I can answer real quick before we do have to go today? I think I don't see any questions. <laughs> All right, great. Well, we'll go ahead and come back to the other camera then. I've got my little stocking sort of started here, but of course you can follow the instructions. And now I've hopefully shown you all the trickiest parts so you can make your own basic crochet Christmas stocking. So I've been Tamara Kelly from Oogly and thank you so much for joining me tonight.